Well, now we've covered a number of different elements, our text boxes and our multiple choice ones, and using these elements, we should be able to gather just about any kind of data we need. There are, however, a couple of additional tags that we can use that come in handy for special cases, like, for instance, the comments field down here at the bottom. I could just use a normal text box, but all I would get would be one line of text. And if we want people to write a little paragraph of comments, we might want to give them a little bit more space. So let's go back over to our document. And instead of using the input type equals text field here, let's use the text area. I'll go right below the comments header and we'll add in a text area tag. This allows me to create a full text box that my user can type into. And of course, it does have a few attributes that we can use to set it up. The first two attributes determine its size. And instead of using a width and a height, we use rows and columns attributes. I'll start with rows. This is gonna be a number that determines how many lines of text we should see. The text lines are about 12 pixels tall and they do vary a little bit from browser to browser. So I'll set mine up equal to, let's say eight. Now for the width, we're gonna use the calls attribute. And this one's measured not by using pixels or percentages or points, it's measured by character width. And what I'm gonna do is type in a number that specifies how many characters wide I want my panel to be. Let me set it to about 25. Now this text field is gonna be sending data, so we need to have a name attribute added as well so that the data will be named. So I'll just name this one comments. And to finish it off, we need to close off the text area start tag, and we can add any elements that we wanna have in the text box when it first appears. So I could type something like, your comments here. And then of course, I'll need a close text area tag to finish it off. Now let's save our change and we'll go try it out on the page. I'll refresh and we can see our new text area is added down here at the bottom. I can just select the comments that we added into the field and add my own. Of course, if I click the send button, that data is sent with everything else. Now there still are a couple of other form elements that you may want to use in your documents. So let's go back and set those up. The first one's kind of trivial. We can add a reset button just in case our user wants to clear out the form and start over. That actually uses an input tag. So let's go down and set it up right after the send button here. I'll add a space and we'll put in another input tag. This time we'll set the type equals reset. Just like the submit button, I can use the value attribute to change the label on the button. So I'll set value equals, and we'll choose something like clear form. Now before we test, let's also try one additional input element that you may need on your forms. This one is a little bit interesting because it's not actually a user input, but it's a way for you to add data to the other data that the user's adding. And that is a hidden field. This also uses an input tag, so I'm just gonna put it right below the comments here. We'll start off with an input tag, and this time the type will equal hidden. Now this field does need a name because it's gonna include real data, so we'll add a name here. And for our example, I'll set it equal to survey number. And since my user won't be inputting this value, we need to add this using the value attribute. And I'll just add a fake survey number, A07, and we could potentially use this to track data coming from several different forms. I'll set up a self-closer for this input field, and it looks like I forgot to do that on the last one, so let me fix that real quick. And now I think we're ready to go and test our two elements. I'll save my changes. We'll go back out and we'll refresh the page. And the first thing you'll notice is we now have a clear form button sitting next to our original field. And if I press it, it does clear our form back to its original state. Remember we had selected values set up for each one of these multiple choice elements. And those are back now the way that we set them in the code. Also, you'll notice that there's no visible area that shows us that hidden field. But let me type some data in. I'll add a name and an email, 
select other elements for the multiple choice pieces, and add some comments. And then I'll just click send like usual. Notice all the data from each one of the elements here. And the last data we see is survey number A07. So you can see that hidden field gets included with the rest of the data, even though my user doesn't enter it.